In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at <clears throat> conditional operators, which are operators that give a result of true or false. These operators are generally used for uh, selection and looping control. So when you have to make a decision in your program, you're going to use these types of operators. In a previous tutorial, I looked at these basic operators, which as I've listed them here, this is less than, equal to, and greater than. And I also talked about one particular set of operators that was missing. Those are traditionally provided by most programming languages and environments. And that is less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. And as I showed before, they're easy enough to put together. You have to use the OR operator to put those together. So I'm just going to show these here kind of as a summary to get us started. So there's five basic comparison operators. Now, we've already introduced the OR because I did less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. So now I'd like to talk about the OR operator and the AND operator together. So the OR operator, the way I like to describe it is, this is the operator that is very easy to please. It basically wants to have at least one thing be true, and then it's generally going to be happy. So I'm going to give you the example. We're going to look at the greater than or equal to example to start. Actually, even an even simpler example. I'm going to put two equals in there. So let's look at the first one and load it up. So the first one, I'm just going to say 1 is equal to 1. Looking at that on its own, well, 1 is obviously equal to 1. And then I'm going to choose one that doesn't make any sense, which is 1 is equal to 2. And if I check that one, one that's, that's obviously false. Now, ask yourself the question, is 1 equal to 1 or is 1 equal to 2? Basically, it's asking, are either of these two things true? Well, the first one is true. The second one is false. But overall, this statement is true because it's basically asking, is this true or is this true? And the answer to that is yes, the first one is true. So if I double click on this statement, the overall combination of those two is true. If I take those same things over here to the AND, and we just go through the same kind of logic, this is called Boolean logic, where you're combining things with ANDs and ORs, is 1 equal to 1 AND is 1 equal to 2? And I like to put the words at the same time on the end. So is 1 equal to 1 AND is 1 equal to 2 at the same time? And that's obviously not true. This part's true, but this part's false. AND is very picky, and so it says overall, nope, I don't like it, this is false. Then finally, the last thing I want to look at is the NOT statement. The NOT statement basically takes any result that you have and turns it on its head. Basically turning something like this, 1 equals 1, changes it from true into the overall statement becomes false. Because if 1 equals 1 is true, then not true, well, what does it mean to be not true? Not true is false. The same thing if I take this one, 1 equals 2 is false. But what is not false, the opposite to false, is true. And you can use larger and larger statements in these things. So for example, 1 equals 1 and 1 equals 2. That is false. I can put that into my not statement, and the overall statement now becomes true. False gets turned into true. And you can do this to whatever depth you need to. Now, why would you do this? Why not just construct a statement um, that has the things you want in it uh, without using this idea of, of reversing it, of not? Well, sometimes we come up with conditions that are actually more difficult to express in a straightforward way. It's sometimes easier to talk about the negation of something rather than all of the conditions that might go into something being positive. So that's a discussion I'm going to explore in a future tutorial. I think the last thing that I want to touch upon in this, uh, in this tutorial would be the idea of variables that can hold on to these values. Now, these are called, true and false are known as Boolean values. And many, or actually all programming languages that are commonly in use, 
allow you to store a Boolean result. So what if I created a variable called numbers same? So I'm trying to use a name that makes it pretty clear what this is going to stand for. In this case, I'm checking to see whether or not two numbers are the same. And I don't want to just keep using these static numbers, so I'm going to create a couple of other variables called num1, and I'll make another variable called num2, which is a far more realistic thing to be comparing, would be a couple of variables, or one variable to one constant value that we've typed in ourselves. So now I've created this variable called numbers, number same, and that's going to check and see, let's see whether or not the numbers are equal. So it's going to check and see if, not if one is equal to one, but it's going to check and see if num1 is equal to num2. And I've got, I'm going to have to expand the size of the stage here. Now right now, whenever you create a variable in Scratch, everything is set to zero. But let's take a look at something. Is, first of all, is num1 equal to num2? Yes, that's true. 0 is equal to 0, so this is true. So now when I say set number same to be num1 equals num2, that result has is the word true. This is now a Boolean variable that has the value of true there. I can actually use that um, to represent anywhere that I would use a true or a false, I can actually use that number same variable. And so just to finish this off, I'll just put in a simple if statement that we're going to cover in more detail in another tutorial. And wherever I had that if, because number same is actually a Boolean variable, I should be able to drop that into that if statement. And unfortunately, due to limitations in Scratch, I can't do it that way, so I would have to say number same equals true. So I'm going to test and see if number same is true and then I would actually say the numbers are the same. And so now number same is set to num1 equals num2. I've checked to see if they're the same and it actually says this. Now it would be very valid for someone to ask at this point, well why would I go to all that trouble when I could simply put num1 equals num2 and I don't have a good answer for that other than to say these boolean variables they are not useful the reason why we do simple examples is so that you can understand yeah these two things mean the same thing but as your examples as your operations get more complicated there may come a time when you would actually prefer to store your result in a boolean variable and then use that result in a creative way like this. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. We've looked at more complicated conditional statements and we've talked a bit about a selection statement if. I'm going to talk about these topics in another tutorial as well.